Hi, I'm Simon Whitehead, and in this week's episode, I'm travelling back to Suffolk to show the full from field to fork ethos from the field to the plate. Stalking for some venison and then enjoying the delicious award winning pies from Truly Traceable. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as we enjoyed the food afterwards. So we come to a little mixed farm, about 200 acres in the north of Suffolk. It's a mixed uh, arable and suckler herd beef farm. Um, got a good head of deer generally throughout the year, problematic with muntjac and um, particularly Chinese water deer in the, in the, in the winter as well. Um, but we've come to, to look for a roebuck. So for this morning's talk, I've brought out the Tika T3 stainless in 6.5 Creedmoor. It's got a loophole VXR scope on the top. It's a 4 to 9 by 4 to 12 by 50, sorry. Um, and we're using Trophy Copper ammunition, 120 grain, non-lead, purely for. That's what our customers are asking for now. So you're going to have to make the change very shortly. So there's always a little bit of added pressure when we go out in a morning stalk because our business relies on me harvesting the, uh, and deer. If I don't get the deer, then we don't make the pies or the sausage rolls to sell to our customers and I don't get paid. That's pressure. So we've stalked around uh, a 30 acre rape field at the top end of the farm <coughs> where there's usually roebuck um, or muntjac. Um, we've walked all the way round, come to the last corner. I was glassing up the side of the, uh, of, of the, of the, uh, of the little spinny and a roebuck appeared out of the tram line. Had a split second to take the shot and the shot was taken and a successful result.
located the deer, growled the deer, inspected, done all the things, because as soon as the deer hit the ground, it was food. Um, and then we now brought it back to the truck to go back to the uh, larder at Hylesworth. Okay, so we're here in the larder, which I converted from my garage, um, and we're going to skin and butcher a Chinese water deer, which was shot on the last day of the season, and I usually hang them for around about six days, maybe seven, but there's six days for this one. So the Chinese water deer that we've just butchered was shot on the 31st um, of March, just before the end of the season and it was shot at um, South Ellum, which is in the north of Suffolk, uh, in the evening. And uh, here we are. Uh, that is the Chinese water deer that we shot. And if I do that, touch there, hit that, that's where it was shot. That was shot at 19, quarter past seven on the last evening of the season. Unluckiest Chinese war deer in Suffolk, I think. So that, that deer now has a number, which I record in my book. That's then diced up, put in a bag, and the number is transferred onto the bag, so there's no, um, there's no uh, loss of trial. And then it's frozen for a later day, or it's cooked straight away, depending on whether we need the pies immediately or not. So uh, the pasty is all pre-made at the beginning of the week. We cook the pie fillings on that day as well. And then today what I'm going to do, I'm going to start assembling the, the pies with the pastry that's already been made. No machine presses, nothing bought in. Once Steve has butchered the, butchered the deer, he brings it through to me and we um, we, we always sear the meat in our pies because we just think the caramelisation of the meat adds to the flavour. Um, and what we've started doing recently is rendering down the fat from the deer and using that to, to cook the meat in, which gives just intensifies the flavour even more. And that's seared with um, onions, uh, some carrots, various herbs and a, a little bit of seasoning, uh, red wine in this as well. Um, we use our own venison stock roast the bones, add um, some carrots, celery and a few um, herbs. So that's quite a slow process. We don't use any bought in stock. So the whole animal, as much as we can, is used in, in the products. Slow cook, there's a little bit of dark chocolate in there as well, because the red, uh, red wine and dark chocolate goes very well with the venison. When the meat's tender, there's not a definite cooking time, because obviously different animals, need some, some need a little bit more cooking than others. And um, once that's, that's cooked, we then thicken it slightly um, and it goes through to the blast chiller to cool down, ready to go into the pies once the pastry is ready. Okay, so once I've got all, to, all the um, fillings into the bases, I then take those through to the freezer um, and then I know how many lids I need to make, um, which I then do before I bring each tray out one at a time and lid them all by hand as well. No, I don't use a pie press, I hand crimp them all. And then once, once they've got the lids on, I, um, I put an ID on so we know which, what the flavour is. And then they go straight back into the freezer with an, with an egg wash on the top. Um, they go into the freezer and they're frozen and then they're packaged the next day. And all our pies are sold frozen for the customers to cook at home. So the pastry I use for the lids is different to the pastry I use for the base. For the base I, use, I make a short crust pastry. And for the for the lids, um, for the lids and the, my sausage rolls, I do a butter rough puff. So that just gives it a little lighter, just a nice bit of a puffier, puffier top on it. I get a bit of plastic, and I put my ID on. Yeah.
There we go. So once they've once the pies have been assembled, egg washed, they go into the freezer. They're frozen overnight. So they're solid, and then we we package them. They all individually packaged with a batch number, frozen on date. All the ingredients and allergens and full cooking instructions on the back. And then they go out to stockists or they go out online from our shop. Uh, easy, easy ready meal for people to cook at home. Hello, I'm Chris Barkin. This is the latest Mauser M18 stainless here in 308. This is a twin column, five shot magazine. You can have one in the chamber if you want to as well. And these will simply click in and load through the top. And if you want the extra one, put that one in first. Calibre options are 223, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 PRC, 308, 3006, or 300 Win Mag. Standard barrel length is 22 inches or 560 millimetres. Overall length is 41 and a half inches or 1,055 millimetres. Length of pull is 14 and a quarter inches or 360 millimetres. Overall weight is 2.96 kilograms or 6.52 pounds. The action is compatible with the Remington 700 scope bases and I've fitted a Picatinny rail for ease of adjustment. The barrel is screw cut 15 by 1 for a moderator or muzzle brake. Barrel diameter is 17.3 millimetres. It offers fully floating capability with a fore end stiff enough to avoid any kind of intermittent contact from different shooting positions. There's also a stud on the underside for a sling or bipod. The bolt handle is 56 millimetres long and it's capped by 22.8 millimetres spherical tip. The release catch on the underside allows the magazine just to drop freely into your hand and reinsertion is that quick and there's no possibility of jams. As well as being able to load it out of the rifle, you can also top up individual rounds with it in the gun. 60 degree bolt lift is incredibly fast in use and there's no possibility of jamming the bolt on its stroke forward. Removal catch on the left side and it has three lugs with twin plunger ejectors. As can be seen in the video itself, all loading, extraction and ejection is ultra reliable. The safety catch is three position, there is safe and all the way rear locks the bolt handle as well before forward for fire. There are rubberized sections on the grip and forend for extra tactile perception. The palm swell is totally ambidextrous allowing the rifle to be shot easily from either shoulder. The recoil pad is solid, gives good grip in your shoulder and gives good tactile perception of the actual amount of pressure you're putting on the rifle when firing. You can also remove this for additional storage in the back. Breaking weight is 890 grams. The crisp trigger is also adjustable. I've been using Mauser M18s for over four years, mostly in 243 calibre, which has become my everyday foxing rifle. This is the 308, so it's more suitable for deer stalking in the UK, and I have to say I've very much enjoyed shooting it. It's just as accurate with sub MOA guaranteed and quite capable on target. As a walking stalking gun, it's a tough tool for the job, and being stainless means it's going to be more resistant to corrosion long term. I like the fact it's not noisy on firing and the stock itself is not prone to resonance when nudged. Handling dynamics are very quick, it's a very pointable rifle and with the moderator added the muzzle is incredibly stable. Recoil is certainly on a par with its peers and even in 308 calibre it doesn't really punch at all.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed that review of the Mauser M18 stainless. Please like, please subscribe, and please comment because your comments are what drives me to make more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Well, there we have it. Another episode done with me, Simon Whitehead. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, go on social and YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. So until the next episode, au revoir. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.